attention. The Federal Ministry of Education stated that Nigeria has the highest number of out-of-school children in the world. That number is 10.5 million out of 20 million globally. So Nigeria has more than half of the total number of out-of-school children in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting on a ticking time bomb. It is time to declare an emergency. The rest of the world will never forgive us if we don't do something about this right now. Boko Haram has killed more than 20,000 people. Millions more have been displaced. Are we surprised? that Boko Haram was able to recruit so many of our youth, 10.5 million out-of-school children is one of the reasons. Are we surprised that many of our youth have turned to violent gangs and drug addiction? 10.5 million out-of-school children is part of the reason. We need to do something about this problem. In the year 2035, Africa will have the largest potential pool of employers in the world. Now that is an opportunity. How can we take the 10.5 million out-of-school children and turn them into an opportunity? that is coming in the year 2035. Let me give you a few ideas as to how we can solve this problem. After World War II, America came up with the Marshall Plan. What is the Marshall Plan? It is it is a plan that enabled America to invest and pull up and rebuild the entire Western Europe. And today, Western Europe has the largest economic block in the world. It's the biggest economic block in the world. We need our own version of the Marshall Plan to tackle this problem because it is such a serious problem. Now, in Nigeria, we have this 10.5 million out of school children. And we need to come up with a, a, a solution that takes these out of school children into the workforce. Our Marshall Plan has to have technology at its core. Because time and time again, technology has been proven to be the great equalizer. What do I mean by this? When, after World War II, Japan wanted to rebuild itself and become an important player in the global community, they focused on technology. By focusing on technology, within a few years, Japan became a force to be reckoned with. I remember there was a time when Americans were afraid that ja the Japanese would take over everything in America. That is the power of technology. A country of less than 6 million people, Singapore, when they wanted to transform them themselves from a swamp into an example for the world, they focused on technology. And today, 
Singapore is an example for everyone to follow. Right here in Africa, when the cell phone revolution hit, we had many countries that adopted this technology immediately. One of those countries was Kenya. And today, the world goes to Kenya to study mobile payments. So technology has to be at the core of any plan we put together to tackle this problem. Seven of the biggest companies in the world today, public companies, by market cap, are technology companies. This is not a coincidence. We are in a digital era. Now, how can we use technology to find a solution to our problem of out-of-school children in Nigeria? We have to provide the right kind of training for these kids. My recommendation is that we turn to tools that can be accessed anytime, anywhere. For example, IBM has a program they call Digital Nation Africa. This is a free platform available throughout Africa. We can take the entire 10.5 million out of school children and place them on this platform under the supervision of volunteers, NYSC core members, as well as participants of the NPOWER program. There are many other programs that can be used. It doesn't have to be the IBM program. Cisco Systems has a program, Google, and many others. Now, we at the CAD ICT Hub have partnered with some of the best teachers in the country to produce videos of the entire curriculum for primary and secondary school in Nigeria. That is available anytime, anywhere for people to access. We have also built the Africa Blockchain Lab the first of its kind in Africa. This tremendous game-changing technology will enable us to take the entire 10.5 million out-of-school children and place them on this platform and track their progress, thereby ensuring that we succeed in this endeavor. Now, how can we bring about all these groups to come and work together and ensure the success of this program? The private organizations, the NGOs, they need to galvanize people, galvanize their employees to turn them into volunteers for this cause because of how serious this is. The government needs to step up and train the NYSC core members as well as the Empower staff to become active participants in this program because of how severe the crisis is. And this becomes a win-win situation for us because if we train our core members and the NPAR staff in digital literacy, that will open up the market for jobs for them. So a person can sit right here in Zaria and get a job anywhere in the world through the internet. But they need to be taught digital literacy. That is the first step. We are in the digital era. That becomes a win-win situation.
for the entire country. Now, we have to ensure that by the time we reach to the year 2035, all the kids that are out of school in Nigeria have gone through this path. They've been given skills that are marketable globally. This will ensure that we do not waste that talent and we survive as a country to get to that situation where Africa will be by 2035. Now, I would like to finally close by giving you some good news that the World Bank just announced that they are making resources available for Nigeria to solve this problem of out-of-school children in Nigeria. If the World Bank, the government, NGOs, and private organizations come together and work as a team to solve this problem that I've articulated today, then we will be well on our way in developing an endurable digital revolution that will enable us to solve once and for all the problem of out-of-school children in Nigeria. Thank you for listening.